is cropping up stockers. This is Zach the stock cropper and Juice Newton with a big ball of sweat in his back because he's a working man. Uh, it's been a hot minute since we've made it a video here. Uh, we've been really busy over the last month with getting uh, our regular crop to lay by with spraying and side dressing and spraying. And uh, now we are working at getting the stock cropper plot to lay by. So uh, a lot has happened since the last uh, video that, uh, that I put out. And so today is going to be catching everyone up as things are growing and they're growing fast. So we're gonna start uh, the presentation today out in the succotash uh, corn and soybean plot. Uh, so for those that haven't seen this, are wondering why we're killing our corn. Um, this plot is, uh, like I've said before, is um, a ripoff of the work that Jason Mock and Junior uh, Fansel out in Nebraska uh, have been playing around with, with this idea of planting two crops at the same time. So what we did here was we planted this corn uh, in the middle of May uh, in 60 inch spacing right here that you're seeing, and then as well as 90 inch spacing, okay? So you can see the difference here. And then we came in about two and a half weeks ago and we drilled soybeans in. Some of you maybe saw that video uh, that I put up on Twitter. It was really, really dry. We did that, we caught about a half inch of rain. Some of them came and we've got some of them that are just coming out of the ground now because we caught a rain here. Uh, caught a two and a half inch rain last weekend. And so that was huge. A lot of stuff was kind of starting to get in trouble around here, but we bought some time. We got some more rain in the uh, forecast for next week. So anyway, uh, what we're doing now is, the idea with this is we wanna create uh, uh, an arena where you can basically leverage and get a lot of flex out of the corn and still get you know down to the point where you have maybe uh, 10, 12,000 plants uh, you know, per acre out here and see how much flex we can give. And then what we're doing right now is we're going through and we're opening up the canopy so that these soybeans in between are catching more light so you can see right here here's a gap we basically go four plants we take out two we go four plants we take out two and we just repeat that pattern and then we're trying to offset it so we get this variance across the canopy to try to increase more light so that the soybeans that are right here aren't going to be shaded out they're going to have more sunlight to wrap around and hopefully the idea is, is that we can get a total uh, greater yield than if we just had this in regular corn or regular soybeans. So on the 60 inch corn, we are uh, removing, like I said, uh, every four plants we take out two. And over here, the fact that this is already at a lower population with a wider spacing, I've been taking one or two out uh, every probably 10 or 12 plants. But the idea is I wanted to try to get this down to um, about 10,000 plants per acre. And this here at about, uh, I think, 10 to 12,000 an acre is what I'm trying to get this down because this is going to have to flex a lot harder. But last year, our 90 inch corn, which sat right over there where the, the barley and the peas are, uh, we had in row yields in this row alignment of 445 bushel an acre. Um, so that's why we're, we're playing with this stuff to try to see the combination. And then the idea is, is that uh, you would either harvest this uh, separately or harvest it all together and then separate it after harvest. But this is. This one's going to be a fun one to watch and come walk through. Okay, so now we're over into the fun part of the plot uh, where we've got our sweet corn. So this is 16 inch sweet corn uh, with a lot of weeds in between. I just, the wind finally went down so I could spray this last night. Um, and we also side dressed this. So you can see uh, juice went along and uh, dribbled some nitrogen on both sides of the, the sweet corn here. And so this stuff uh, hadn't had any end because the planter we used did not have it on it. Um, but now it is going to really take off. We get a rain. So now we're into, so that's just 60 inch sweet corn there. And this is 90 inch with nothing growing in between. And uh, now we're into the 90 inch sweet corn with pumpkins and some weeds, which will die here after the spraying we did last night. This is a better look of what it looks like. You can see they're really starting to, to spread out, we basically did a, a diamond pattern uh, planting up and down, hoping to kind of cover this space and then so the sweet corn could come up. And then over here, we've got our decorative Indian corn uh, 
where we've got, uh, let's see here, we've got, yeah, 60 inch and 90 inch and then 60 inch. And we've got mini jack pumpkins. These are a lot smaller, huh? that's a buttonweed. There they are, full of mildew. Um, but we've got uh, mini jacks over here. So the first part of the plot here, the plot tour is, like I said, some of the fun stuff and then the succotash. And I should say, if things go well, we will have that sweet corn, hopefully for our field day, either on August 19th or August 20th. Final date yet to be determined, uh, but highly likely it will be that weekend for those that are wanting to ask. And I should also say, I've had several requests this week uh, for people seeing some of the tweets on Twitter saying, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to come on my own, or I've got a group that I'd like to bring out. Uh, I'm totally open to that. So if you don't want to wait till uh, August or you've got commitments on that one, uh, I am more than happy to entertain uh, single parties or a busload of people or whatever you want to bring in. If you're interested in these concepts, this place is here for people to learn and hopefully be inspired to think about things uh, differently. I don't know that we've got any of the answers right here, but if, if what comes from this is spurring somebody else that gets a concept and go home and figures it out on their own, uh, that's a huge win for me. So anyway, now I'm standing in front. I should back up. So if you're interested in that, hit me at the stockcropper gmail.com. It's going to come scrolling across like magic from iMovie. Um, so now we are sitting in the field pea and uh, barley right here. So we planted, uh, if I can do this, I can't do it. I'm not that good looking backwards. We planted field peas right here in rows and then we drilled barley in on top of it. This needs a shot of nitrogen. We're gonna stream jet some stuff on to perk this stuff up here. And now we'll move over to the actual stock cropper. Okay, so there they are, they're the barns. We're back in action here. This is the first video that we've seen. The plot has changed a lot. Our soybeans uh, have, this is our little fill check here. Uh, they're doing well. So our stock cropper corn looks 10 times better than it did last year. Uh, we do not have the drought stress. We put more of a gap and controlled this so that corn's not competing with the pasture run as much. And then we also have our high population corn on the outside. So this is about 45 or 46,000, 35,000 in between. Then we've got our summer, or I'm sorry, our cool season pasture mix with oats, rape, annual ryegrass, the occasional lambs quarter cluster, which the sheep love. And uh, this stuff is uh, just started heading out this week as we launch the barn. So here we have it, uh, the long awaited return of the cluster cluck nano back to, back to Iowa. So I went and I picked this barn up at dawn in Milwaukee and uh, we've got a couple sheep in here uh, right now. We moved the barn here about an hour ago and they were hungry. They already tramps this down pretty well. So we're gonna move it here again in another uh, couple hours and uh, give them some, uh, some fresh forage. So you can see again, the additions to the barn this year, like I've talked about, is the addition of RTK Auto Steer. So you can see on top, we have two GPS antennas along with uh, AT&T communication antenna so that the boys can log in from Milwaukee if we have any issues with the computer programs. You can see these decorative tractor weights uh, with some heavy duty wires that we uh, put on here. One of the issues that uh, we had to balance out if this thing was going to be automated is the back pen is significantly heavier than the front pen so when we had them on the barn was out of balance and it kind of wanted to ride a wheelie like this through the field and that not an issue unless you get into soft ground conditions and then the back pen drags so we balanced it out with these wheel weights in front we'll maybe paint them black so they look nicer than what they do eventually for those that are concerned with such things um but the barn has been uh, out in Milwaukee. They've been testing it for the last two weeks, driving it around on a set course with using nothing other than the auto steer. And so I'm hoping that, I'm gonna have another video here uh, to just demonstrate that alone. But we've got the barn here. We drove it off the trailer with a joystick. We've got it in the field and we're off and running. We don't have any chickens in here yet. The chickens need about another week uh, before they're gonna be ready to come out here. But the chickens will be added to this one. So we'll have sheep and poultry in there. This is our summer pasture run that we just drilled a little over a week ago. And there's the compressor kicking on on the Nano. So uh, we burned this down. So we've got the lamb score you can see dying. And then we've got soybeans and sorghum coming up in the mix here. So we got really lucky. Uh, we bet on rain 
last weekend and we got two and a half inches and a week later we've got uh, our pasture mix up so this is a little bit different mix uh, than we had last year i did mix a little bit of sorghum sudan in as well um, but we were trying to make the mix a little bit shorter so it was easier for the barn fences uh, to get through okay so now we get over to so that's the the 10 foot iteration now we're getting into the 20 foot iteration of so this first run i showed this is the 20 foot lane for the cluster cluck 5000 this is the first 20 foot of crop uh, so we again have the barley and field pea mix next to four rows of intercrop corn again the same high population mix and uh, here are our 22 uh, class or 2022 class of berkshire hogs uh, that we got thanks again from chat uh, to chad Ingalls over there uh, by Randalia, Iowa, who we drove over and got these. This is a really, really nice looking set of hogs and they're really, really stout. These things were absolutely phenomenal quality for meat wise last year and they're gonna be available. So if you, we've got 10 of them here, first 10 people to uh, to put in a request uh, can have some infamous uh, stock cropper uh, pork. So out in the front, boy, they got this grazed down fast. We're gonna have to move this again. So we've got f uh, five lambs that uh, uh, a friend and neighbor of mine, Dylan Vortman, uh, agreed to let us use for the season. Um, so uh, we're essentially just custom feeding on the on the summer pasture and giving him some uh, some notoriety here on the channel. So this uh, they moved Jordan moved this at like eight o'clock this morning, and this is really uh, grazed down well. So we're going to probably move this again. The idea is that we want to be moving faster than we did last year, so three to four times a day. We've got 750 foot lanes here. It's gonna take us about 20, uh, I think, what did I figure? About, about a month to get through here and then we'll be back into this stuff in 30 days that you see right here. And then the idea is we'll come back and then we'll be back here uh, about the 1st of September again, 60 days from now. So we'll give about 60 days of rest, come back and, and hit these strips again, okay? So that's what it looks like. We've got the 560 out here. I have not got my uh, my winch system yet. Uh, that's gonna get ordered today. But our idea is, is that we're going to put a winch on the front of the barn right there. And then we're gonna put a ground anchor out say 100 feet or so. And we'll get the barn set up so that at least with this one, when you come out to chore, you'll be able to flip a switch on the back. And this one, we have just the manual steer. So we'll still, we won't, the Nano will be able to run on its own this one we're still going to have to come out and adjust but ideally we're going to get this one set up so that we'll have a computer program on board solar panels battery so that this one will advance itself i'm hoping by the end of the season that's the that's the goal so really what we're trying to demonstrate this year is autonomous movement with different means so the winch system rtk auto steer we looked at a lot of other things we looked at optical uh, sensors, uh, cameras, uh, all of this stuff is hard. There's a reason that uh, Elon hasn't gotten uh, self-driving cars uh, to work because all this stuff is really difficult. And when you look at all the different venues that we're steering this barn through and the different crop mixes and the height differentials between you know, uh, the vegetation out here, it's not a simple thing um, to just put like a camera system on here and expect that it's going to work uh, consistently. So that's why we've made the choices that we've made. Okay, and last but not least, this is the 30-inch, uh, 60-inch, and 90-inch uh, corn test plot that we have on the west side of the stock wrapper. So this sits just to uh, the west of the Cluster Cluck 5000. And again, this test is real simple. We wanted to test uh, different row spacings with different hybrids. So we've got three or four hybrids across the planter. There's three planter passes here. We're in the 30 inch corn. So there's four different hybrids, um, four rows wide in this mix and 30 inches. And then we move over into, let's see. Yeah, this is the 90 inch twin row, okay? So we have 90 inch twin row here. So we've got plants that are spaced. The twin rows we shot for about eight inches apart, okay? And these are looking really, really good actually right now. I'm really excited. But we, we planted three different population blocks down to where you can see the soybeans about 750 feet down. So 250 foot at 16,000 on each planter pass. And then we went to 25,000 down in the middle. 
and then 36,000 on the far end where it really starts to bush out. So now we're into, so that was the 90s, now we're into the 60s. And like I said, we've got across the 60s, we've got four different hybrids. So each hybrid gets two twin rows essentially. And then on the 90s, we've got three hybrids across there that we're gonna be able to take observations at different planting populations. This is one, you know, there's not a lot, I mean, let's face it, we're not gonna flip a switch and make mainstream agriculture stock crop. But I think one of the things that could be valuable that we learned from this plot this year is what are the dynamics with some of these alternative arrangements where you could come in here and seed a forage crop that could be grazed or perhaps baled in the fall where you could get enough contribution from the corn crop that whatever and by opening this channel up in this twin row planting alignment you get enough value out of that that there's room for something else to come in and create something greater than the whole so one of the things that we've got to do is we've got to get this seeded we haven't done it yet we're going to end up having to do it by hand and then till it in um, because we don't have a drill that will easily fit down the twin row um, arrangements without running stuff over with the wheel alignments and just trust me we don't have it so we're going to hand seed this with a spinner box and then we're going to lightly till this in we're going to burn a lot of 470 gas through a garden tiller to make this sexy before the next rain comes so you can see we got a lot going on in the 2022 stock cropper plot and i'm really excited that uh things have kind of come together you know we were able to pull the plan off the marker board and put it into a reality uh, we've been really dry, but we were lucky to catch rain last week that gave us some uh, some life. And, you know, hopefully we're going to catch some more this week uh, as we are still really dry here. But uh, we've got a lot of really cool concepts that are going to develop and we're going to be able to learn from it. I'm really looking forward to sharing it, whether it's on YouTube or you uh, make an appointment to stop by and get your own tour see the barns or you're going to come to our field day on August uh, 19th or 20th somewhere in there um, there's just a lot of fun to be had here with the rest of this summer and you know showing off the autonomous movement that we're going to demonstrate with uh, the barns themselves we just have a lot going on and a lot to uh, to be pumped and excited for here uh, this season so uh, I've had a couple questions uh, in regards to availability of barns with some of the tweets that I've put up in the last few days um, you know, right now we're trying to finish this production run and we're going to probably make some additional tweaks once we see how the new design is going to work out at Jason Mox in Indiana. Uh, but then hopefully after that, I am really hoping that we'll have a version, uh, you know, of, uh, of a cluster cluck that we can take some orders on and set up production runs for this winter for delivery for next spring. That's the hope right now. Uh, a lot of things are up in the air. Um, but I'm hoping that that will be where we will end up uh, for the 2023 season. So anyway, stay tuned. Thanks again for all your support and watching and happy birthday, America. I love living in this country and being in a space where we can have freedom to explore, you know, crazy ideas like the stock robber. So I hope everyone has a safe and happy, productive fourth and uh, we'll see you next week.